Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson, the sixth topic in Chapter 8, Feedback. As always, you'll learn everything you need to know for your exam, and our three learning objectives today are to identify and outline the four different types of feedback, to explain how each type of feedback links to the stages of learning, and explain the importance of receiving good feedback and the impact it can have on performance. Before we begin, if you haven't already watched my previous video, I recommend you do so now by clicking on the banner, as you'll need an understanding of the three stages of learning if you're to get the most out of today's lesson. Feedback is the information that a performer receives about their performance, and is essential for helping us to assess the quality of our actions. It can be given during or after a performance, and can help us to improve by showing us which skills and techniques we need to develop. The feedback loop illustrates the importance of feedback and where it fits into the cycle of creating improved performances. From this, we can see that feedback allows us to assess our performances and make adjustments that help us to become more effective in the future. Feedback can take several different forms and one major distinction is between extrinsic and intrinsic feedback. Extrinsic feedback can be defined as information that comes from an external source, such as a teacher or coach, the reaction of a crowd or your teammates. Extrinsic feedback is particularly important for beginners in the cognitive stage of learning, as they're yet to develop a feel for the skills and techniques, and are therefore reliant on an outsider to tell them how they got on and what they need to do to improve. Intrinsic feedback, on the other hand, is information that comes from within. The emotions we feel, thoughts about our actions, and the feel of the movement derived from our muscles gives us plenty of useful information. Experienced performers in the autonomous stage of learning can use this information to self-analyze and make immediate adjustments. Feedback can also come in the form of knowledge of results and knowledge of performance. Knowledge of results essentially means knowing your score, time, distance, or place in a race, and can be used to provide a quick measure of success. Knowledge of results is a form of extrinsic feedback as it's provided from outside sources. Knowledge of performance, on the other hand, is feedback that comes from analyzing the quality of movements and techniques, regardless of the result. Examples include how good your timing felt when playing a ground stroke in tennis, and whether a landing after a vault was clean. This form of feedback can be intrinsic or extrinsic. Now that we've outlined the four types of feedback, we'll take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of each with reference to learners at the three different stages of learning. Extrinsic feedback advantages. As previously mentioned, extrinsic feedback is important for beginners who lack knowledge and need constant feedback in order to learn. Experienced performers can also benefit, however, as they're able to combine intrinsic and extrinsic feedback to gain a more accurate picture of their performance. Disadvantages. Qualified coaches are required to give the feedback, as incorrect feedback from a poor quality coach could cause performances to decline. Intrinsic feedback. Advantages. Because feedback comes from within, performers don't need to wait to hear their coach's opinion and can make adjustments immediately. Disadvantages. A high level of knowledge is required, meaning intrinsic feedback has limited relevance for cognitive learners who don't yet know what to adapt or how to go about it. Knowledge of results, advantages. Results give a quick and objective measure of success, can provide a target to work towards, for example, moving up the rankings in a golf tournament, and can be used to show improvement over time if recorded regularly. Disadvantages. Knowledge of results should not be provided as feedback to cognitive learners, as outcomes are likely to be poor, which could be demotivating. In addition, knowledge of results may not reflect skill level or the quality of performance. For example, coming third in a race against strong opposition may be more impressive than winning a race against weaker runners. Knowledge of performance advantages. This type of feedback can be easily tailored to suit an individual's ability level. For example, simple feedback on one or two areas could be provided to cognitive learners, while specific and detailed feedback is given to those with more experience. Disadvantages. When analyzing the performances of experienced or autonomous learners, there may be several skills and techniques that require feedback, which can be time consuming. Coaches may also need to see videos of a performance first to ensure their feedback is accurate. Now that you have an understanding of the four types of feedback and how they link to the stages of learning, let's take a look at what constitutes good quality feedback. 
Firstly, it's important to include positive feedback that focuses on what a performer did well, as too much criticism or negative feedback affects confidence and motivation. There are three words that summarize the qualities of good feedback, fast, focused, and factual. Fast means that feedback should be given as soon after the event as possible so that the skills are still fresh in the mind. Focused means feedback should only target the key areas of concern or development as confusion may result if feedback is too broad. Finally, feedback should be factual, which means it should be based on evidence from the performance itself. If a coach is unable to point out exactly where a mistake was made, performers may struggle to understand the relevance of the feedback and how it should be applied. Now you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 8.6, feedback. Applying what you've learned to past exam questions should be your next step, and you can find a link to the Cambridge Past Paper database down in the description. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful, and I'll see you in the next one.